Hello, it's Miriam with a Y. I've had a lot of requests for seeing representational art being done with alcohol inks. So today we're going to do a sunset over the ocean and maybe throw in, I don't know, the silhouette of a palm tree on a beach or something like that. After checking out a few different sunset over water pictures, I picked out my colors and I'll list all of them in the video description box below this video. I'm going to start out with a dark blue toward the top and then take it through these colors for the actual sunset. And for the water, I'll use the same dark blue again and a teal. And if I throw in the island or beach with uh, the palm tree, I'll use this for the beach area. Other materials and supplies we'll use are blending solution and or alcohol, 90% or higher. I personally like mixing the two, and the reason I do that is alcohol blending solution is a little pricey, and alcohol doesn't have the binding agent that the blending solution does. So if I mix the two, I kind of get the best of both worlds. So lower cost and some binding. We'll need a cheap paintbrush or two, a paper towel or rag, gloves, a small palette if you have one. If not, you can use a saucer or bottle caps, um, a ball stylus or a dotting stylus. And if you don't have one of those, a toothpick will work, um, a bamboo skewer can do the job, and a black alcohol ink marker to do the silhouette of the palm tree if we do that. And extras that can easily add details you might like but are not necessary are alcohol ink markers in pinks, a gold, a gray, and if you don't have an official alcohol uh, ink marker in black, you can use Sharpies. Because remember, Sharpies are alcohol ink markers too, and they will do the job just fine. I'm going to be painting on a six by six inch ceramic tile, but you can do this on glass, on Yupo paper, acetate, any non-porous surface that makes you happy. The important thing is that be, it be a surface that doesn't absorb the alcohol inks in any way. So you don't want to work on canvas for this or regular paper or even some glossy papers because some of those suck up the ink and we want something that doesn't suck it up at all. Now to make my life easier, I've marked off where I want my horizon to be. I'm hoping you can see this fine line that I drew here in pencil. And then I've also laid down a piece of scotch tape along that line so that when I paint in the sky, I don't have to be super careful about trying to maintain a straight line. So when I'm done painting in the sky, I'll just pull off the tape and I'll have a clean line to end and um, to know where to start the other part of the painting, the ocean. So for me, I'm going to turn my tile this way so that um, I have my horizon line going up and down this way. You might want to turn it in a different position for yourself, but for me, being left-handed, this is going to be easy. And um, also, for me, drawing straight lines is easier going up and down than left to right, and so I like working in this position. But you might not need to do it that way. Now I'm going to spread some blending solution and some alcohol. The goal is to get this area really nice and wet. And I'll even use my finger to spread it all around and mix it all up. All right, now that this is nice and wet, I'm gonna start laying down some color and I've decided to throw in indigo into the mix. Indigo is an extremely potent color, so I have to be really stingy with how much I put down. Otherwise, it will want to take over. And then 
some blue, some purple, and just a little magenta to take me down into the red. And I'm just gonna let the colors sort of move around, blend into each other. See how the indigo is so little that I put down, but it's really very dominant. But it's a beautiful blue. Okay, and now with the paintbrush, what I'm gonna do is start sort of striping back and forth to give the color movement. And see how when I drag through, it looks like I'm gonna have a stripe, but then it softens because this is still really wet. And then what I want to do is sort of tap off my brush so that I don't have so much of that color when I come in to play with the red and the pink. I don't want to contaminate it with too much blue. And now I'm hitting the scotch tape so I know that I can stop because that's where my horizon line is going to be. And now I'm going to let this sort of settle and dry for a little bit. And I'll be back. The inks are all dry, and in the meantime, what I did was add a couple of drops of the different colors I'm using into the wells of the palette and let them dry. So there's purple in here, the blue, a teal, the yellow, and red. And I took a Sharpie, just a regular Sharpie, or any alcohol ink marker, and I made myself some marks in the sky. And this is where I'm going to be positioning some clouds. I made smaller marks toward the bottom and bigger ones toward the top so that the bigger clouds will suggest uh, being closer to the viewer and then the little ones will make the viewer think of this as being further away. So the sun yeah. will be somewhere around here and I want a few clouds just to make the sky a little more interesting. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, why is she using a black Sharpie for clouds? Well, the clouds at night are not going to be white. They're going to look grayish, and they're going to have some color coming from the sky. You know, the sunset's going to impact the color of the clouds. But they're going to be predominantly a gray, dull color. So this is going to help us out in getting that color. And I'm going to turn this back sideways because, like I said, for me, it's easier to think this way when I'm painting. When I'm painting, I don't know why. I just, I'm weird that way. Just, just go with it. Now, either in an empty well of your palette or a separate little dish, give yourself a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And with your paintbrush, you want to get your paintbrush just slightly wet, not really sopping wet at all. You want an almost dry brush. And in this case, I want dark clouds, so I'm gonna come into the purple. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of purple. And one of the things that I sometimes do to test out my brush is on the palette, kind of dab it. This is too wet. This is not how much, I want hardly anything to be coming off the brush. So this, I'm gonna try to get it drier than this. And then I'm gonna come in to my, one of my black spots and start tapping. And then I'm coming at the black and I'm tapping above the black. And my goal is to get the black to be at the bottom and have it be sort of like the shadow at the bottom of the cloud. And I'm just tap, tapping to get a little texture into the sky. The drier the brush, the better. The black sort of causes a dark, dark. line at the bottom. Let me zoom you in so that you can see what I'm doing a little better. I want a very 
dry brush, as dry as I can get it, but still, <coughs> it's a hard, it's hard to describe, but so by tapping just above the black, I form my cloud and then I start to pick up the black and then the black will blend in at the bottom and give me like a shadow. So again, I'm starting a little bit above, tap, tap, tapping. And then coming down into the black and letting the black fill in the bottom of the cloud. And then just repeat that for as many clouds as you want. And if you need more black, you can always add more black. Now another option is to just have some black ink in your well and pick it up that way. But I find that doing it with the Sharpie is neater and less aggressive. All right, I'm gonna clean off my brush a little bit here. I still don't want a super wet brush, but just wanna give myself a sense of where I'm gonna start the sun. And I'm just tapping here to clear off an area for the sun. And I'm just cleaning an area. Because if I come in with yellow now, I'm just gonna make a big orange sun, which could be fine, but I kinda of want a little bit of yellow. So I wanna clear off some color. You could use a Q-tip for this too. And once you're happy with the size of your sun, you have a couple of options for how to fill it in with the yellowish, goldish color. And you can either use a brush dipped into gold ink, or if you have a gold, and I don't mean gold, metallic gold, but I mean sort of like golden rod color, um, or butterscotch or that kind of color marker, you can use that to fill in. Now, some people would just drop a drop of alcohol uh, ink straight from the bottle here. I have done that. And the reason I tend not to do that so much anymore is it can get away from you. One, you can go to tip the bottle and a drop falls out, but two or three drops fall out. And then you've got a big sun here and a little sun over there and a little sun over here, which is not what you want. Or <laughs> you get a humongous sun that just grows to be this big. So just to, if you know, if you're working on a huge painting, it's not a problem. But if you're working on something kind of small, you might want to do things in a more controlled way so that the sun does not become, yeah, the whole scene. <laughs> So I'm just recommending these ways of doing it instead. Okay. And I am not going to try to paint all around because that'll just make this grow. I'm going to start in the center and just dab it in the center and let it, because it's going to want to spread. And then just keep feeding it in the cent center and letting it spread and see where it goes. And if it's not going as far as I want, then I can feed it some more. But I don't wanna do this kind of sweeping painting motion unless you start to see that your ink is drying, like mine is. Then you can kind of risk it. But now I have to stop because I see it moving toward the line. I can come back in. Okay, and I'm gonna stop there. All right. Now, with a brush that comes to more of a point, 
I'm gonna get that nice and wet. Come and reactivate the red that I had put in my little palette. Just pick up some red, not a ton, and make sure again that I'm not, I haven't flooded the brush. And all I'm gonna do now is in the sun, start in the sun, drop the brush in, and pull out. Drop the brush in, pull out. And I'm gonna do that going in a couple of directions. And this is just to suggest clouds that are crossing in front of the sun. And you decide how much of that you want to have happen. I've got to clean up this area up here that is still a little white. Fill it in with either a little bit of yellow. Yeah. Maybe cross a little bit over here too. Now for the land masses. So all I'm going to do for that Nothing brilliant. Remember, this is the horizon line. So I'm just going to take the Sharpie, do something like that. And then on this side, maybe make it a little smaller so that they're not exactly the same. And I'm literally going to fill this in with the Sharpie. Or again, if you have black alcohol ink, you can do it with a brush and black ink. But this is fast and pretty precise. Now, before we move on to the ocean area and the island, I am giving some of the clouds a little bit of a halo. And what I'm doing, this will work if you're working on a tile, maybe acetate, or I don't know if it'll work on Yupo. I haven't tried this on Yupo, but you really have to be careful if you're doing this on anything other than tile. I'm using a fairly dull X-Acto, and all I'm doing now is scraping off the alcohol ink at the top of the cloud. So that I, I did it on this one and I'll do it on this one now, just a little bit on this one, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm just literally scratching off the alcohol ink and exposing the white again. And the reason I'm doing it this way rather than with a brush or anything is, as you've seen, when you do it with alcohol, it spreads. Doing it this way, it will not spread. Excuse the squeaking. And I'm just doing it a little tiny bit. And then I can fill this in with either like a peachy color or maybe, um, a little bit of gold, and that's just to give the clouds a little halo that you would see at the top of clouds that are in front of a sunset. And the advantage of this step also is that it lets you correct mistakes you might have made and things you don't like you can kind of clean them up in this step. If you're doing this on something like Yupo or something where you can't really scrape off the alcohol ink, use a white paint pen and then paint in the lines white and then you can color them back in. Okay, now I'm gonna be working with a gold, um, well, the color is is a it's called pale sepia, so the Copic marker, but any gold colored marker will do. And because I don't want to have to keep switching between markers, 
I put a drop of magenta ink here that I can sort of dip this marker into to get that color picked up. And now in any other kind of marker, you won't want to do that. But what's awesome about alcohol ink markers is that you can sort of contaminate the tip with another color temporarily. And then once you're done with that, you wipe off the tip and it goes back to being its original color. Because I'm just too lazy to keep switching markers. I'll just be honest with that. So I am now going to color this in all the parts that I scratched off. I don't want them all to be like a full gold color. I would want some to have like a little bit of a peachy corally color. So that's why I'm going to dip my marker into the magenta and it'll sort of color this marker of a corally color since it's combining the magenta with the gold. And then this way I can give the top of my clouds that sort of sunset kissed color. Now if you don't have an alcohol ink marker, you can also use a very fine point paintbrush. Um, a toothpick can do it too if you sort of fray the edge of the toothpick so that you can get the ink to run up the wood a little bit. So I'm sort of combining the gold color with this blushy color and I may pick up some magenta periodically just to give the clouds some highlights. Okay, and now that I'm done with that, I'm going to clean off my marker and bring it back to its original color. So I'm just going to keep wiping it up on the paper towel until the only color that comes off is the blush. That way I know that I've purged it of the gold that I was dipping it into. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm pretty happy with that. That is... That works for me. So now I'm going to peel off the tape and we can start working on our ocean area. So the decision I have to make now is where do I want to place my beach and tree? In this case, I'm okay with both sides. I like these clouds a little better than this dark one here, but the silhouette will pop better on this side because it's lighter on this side. So it's better for me to place it here, even though I wouldn't mind covering up this cloud because I don't love it. But I'm going to make my little beach area here, like here. And then the tree will kind of go here, I think. I'm going to turn my tile again this way because all my ink is here. And Let's put a piece of paper here to protect this work area so that if I splash alcohol or some ink by accident, I don't mess up this area. All right, now I'm going to pick up some of this blue. I'm just going to paint just to see what my colors are like. Okay. i cover myself up here just to be safe. Because sometimes when you're flicking with a brush, little spots fly off. And I don't want little blue spots on my sun or and my clouds. 
and I'm mixing up the blue. And in the end, how much texture your water has or doesn't have is entirely up to you because there's no right way or wrong way to do this. It's your painting. Do what makes you happy. I want a crazy textured ocean because my sky is kind of smooth. It's got clouds, but I want a good contrast between the two. So now what I need to do is work out the reflection of this island and this one. It's probably easier to do it this way. Okay, and the same for this one with my gray marker. Just kind of fill this in. And since the water has a texture of gray, I'm giving it texture too. All right, let's do the sun in the water. Okay, now what I'm gonna do for that is very similar to what I did for the top of the clouds. I'm going to scratch in some lines in the water ripples that would show reflections of the sun. I could just take a yellow marker and then just kind of push through the blue, but this is a slightly cleaner way of doing it and it also lets me slowly plan out where I want my lines to be. And honestly, I also enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So I kind of like this sort of removal part also. It's kind of fun. And then while I'm in scratch mode, <laughs> I'm gonna scratch out my island again. I won't bore you with that. I'm just going to scratch in the shape of the island. I think you get the idea. And I'll come back after I finish doing that. That's where my island's going to go. So I'm going to protect this area now. And just pour some of the brown color that I chose. And just paint this all in. And now for the reflections, we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did to the top of the clouds. I'm going to use a marker and draw in these lines to sort of suggest the sun reflecting in the water. And I'm just going to add a little moments of pink, maybe red, and then color in these lines with the yellow. For me, part of the fun of alcohol ink is all these little lines, these little breakups of color that sort of lets you know that this is alcohol ink. It's sort of like the trademark look of it. I almost like creating them on purpose. If I just did this, it would be a straight line. But that's kind of boring to me. So I prefer to sort of start and stop and then get these sort of little borders that happen. You know, like that. So it looks like drops. I just like that. It's just, it's a fun texture and it's really so 
indicative of using alcohol ink markers and alcohol ink in general. Let us bask in the glow of the sun for a moment. <laughs> and then the last thing we're going to do is put it out tree. Woohoo! A tree starting here, maybe arcing out to here, and then some fronds. What do you think? <laughs> kind of trying to visualize it. I think that'll be it. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm just going to be all bold and take my Sharpie and I'm going to have the top of the tree be here and arc it down like that. One frond do this, one frond do that, another one here, maybe another one like that. There we go. For my fronds, I'm just going to do this sort of thing. It's pretty simple. Just lots of this until I filled in the branch or frond or whatever these things are called on the palm tree. <laughs> Now another way to go is to just use black ink and pour it into a, a little bit into a well and then use a paintbrush to paint in your tree or whatever silo whatever silhouette you're going to do. That actually goes faster because you can get wider strokes. And I think the strokes you get with a brush are certainly more painterly and in a way prettier. But I know that working with a brush can be scary if you're not used to doing it. Working with a marker is easier. But try a brush for fun. The movement of it in your hand is kind of heavenly a little. <laughs> and remember it's a tree, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it's perfect looking, it looks faker somehow to me. So I almost like when my trees are less than perfect. I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm just going to kind of look it over to see what little details need to be cleaned up. I'm going to darken the beach a little, especially out by the water. And then I think I'll be totally happy. And for that I'm just painting over what I did with a little more of that espresso color and a little bit of black in my brush. I think the beach is looking a lot moodier, which is kind of cool. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I love the beach now. It's a really good contrast for the brightness of the sky and the ocean. Oh, I love it. I'm going to zoom you in to see everything a little bit better. But before I do that, I want to answer a frequently asked question. How do you seal alcohol ink pieces? After letting a piece completely dry so that none of it is sticky, I seal it with this spray by Krylon, Kamar Varnish. It's the only varnish I've ever found that has zero impact on the inks. It doesn't make them bleed, it doesn't reactivate them no matter how much I put on. 
Then once I've let this dry, I can then add a UV protecting spray or varnish on top of that. Or if I want a super high gloss finish, I would probably add my favorite resin, which is ClearCast 7050. So I will have links to all of that in the description box below the video. And of course, I'll have all the materials I used in the description box too and links for those. Now, some of those things I get online, but not all of them. Lots of supplies can be found on Amazon, sure, but remember your local art supply stores too. They're an awesome resource for supplies. You get personal attention, sometimes great advice on materials and tools, and you get to touch and smell and really drool over all the goodies that are available to us. And sometimes their prices are better too. So support your local art and craft suppliers. It's up to us to keep them alive and healthy. <laughs> all right. Using my links to help you get to Amazon certainly helps my channel, so I'm super grateful, and I'm beyond grateful to those of you that have chosen to help with donations for our supplies. It lets me get fun things to show you, and I've gotten quite a few cool things to show you in the coming weeks, now that my health and life are back to normal. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this, and give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like it. Tell me what else you'd like to see, like more representational pieces. This one had a hint of abstract to it, obviously, but would you like to see more full-on abstract as well? Let me know that too. Please share this with your friends and whatever groups you belong to. That is one of the kindest things you can do. It really helps a great deal. Remember to subscribe and let your creative nature shine. Thanks for watching. Go leave a comment now. <laughs> See you next time. Bye now.